So, I saw Martin Hellett's video on YouTube, and I wondered if, what it would be like to play with one of these Roman dodecahedrons. Because I thought he did some, he just had some great lateral thinking there. So, I ordered one from Shapeways.com. Jay Kent sized one up for me on the theory that if uh, Martin's makes gloves for a, a young lady, then maybe for an older lady like me, I'd need a larger size. So, I have some, some white yarn here, and I'm going to see what I can do. So, my yarn is bulky. It's heavier than worsted. And I'm going to start by, uh, I'll take the large hole. No, I'll take the small hole. And I'm going to put the yarn through the small hole and drop it through. So now I'm going to wrap, uh, wrap it around the pegs. I like working counterclockwise. So I'm just going to wrap it around each peg like that and go back to the beginning. And then I have, this is a tool from another Knitting Nancy. And uh, I'm going to reach through the hole, grab it and pull it through. Lift the old stitch off and put the new stitch on. Okay, and then I'm going to pull the string tight. You can tie a weight on this loose end if you want, and that would help keep it tight. Again, I'm not very good at this or very experienced. Edit. So that's how you start. So after a few rounds, you want to start pushing the um, pushing it toward the hole and pulling from underneath so that we can get it started going down the hole. So once you've gone around several uh, times, you'll want to... Well, whenever it gets full in the middle, you will want to reach in with your fingers, grab that glove finger, and pull it down more. And you see what's happening. This is narrowing the uh, knitting. So it's going to fit my little finger. So... At this point, I think it's long enough. I can put my finger in there and it's completely covered. And of course, this is going to make it longer here. So, the way to take it off, and I have not figured out how to knit five of these in a row the way that Martin did. Um, maybe he will sh share his secret with us soon, but snip the yarn so that you have about this much um, left and what you want to do is take uh, take your yarn and this time pull it all the way through and then lift it off and again wrap it around pull it through all the way through and lift it off hmm. sorry Last one.
Okay, so now you can pull it out of the hole and put putting my finger in there there it is. Now you can either leave the tip if this if I wanted fingerless gloves I would have made it shorter and just left the tip the way it is and woven in the end. But <clears throat> um, what you can do by easing the what was the first stitch around um, each each loop. There are five loops of course and so by easing them around you can tighten up the fingertip and it makes a really nice fingertip. Um, okay, well, I've missed some, but it makes a really nice. Uh, I'll, I will fix that. Okay, last step is to get a needle with a very large eye called a tapestry needle and um, look for a good place to put this and put it in here run it all the way down inside the finger and get your scissor and cut it like this and there you go one finger. Now, now here are five glove fingers that I made out of a dark hue yarn and um, I don't know at this point, I, I have no theory on how you could use the dodecahedron to finish the rest of the glove. I would, you know, at this point I suppose if you had a uh, a knitting loom with 17 pegs on it, because that's how many stitches would be left after you tied these together, perhaps uh, perhaps that would work. But I just did want to show you that the arguments about it being a poor quality of cloth. Um, that it would uh, not work for gloves is just based on the fact that the wrong kind of yarn was used, the wrong size of yarn. And um, my guess is that you would use a small dodecahedron to make child size gloves, a medium one to make woman size gloves, and a very large one to make man size gloves. So uh, anyway, thanks Martin for a great idea and um, hopefully, uh, you know, more evidence will surface. Thank you.